All right, the good news is it's working. So I was uh, with a student last night and she was always saying how sore she is the day after a, a class or a lesson. And I was like, yes, you remind me of my little girl. See, this is how you start. That's Play-Doh, right? You come into the studio, no skills, no knowledge. And then, I, then we flat you out, we rebuild you, we mush you around a little bit to turn you into this. <laughs> That's what you come out like, ready to roll. <laughs> and uh, she laughed a little bit, and then uh, we proceeded to make her more sore. So welcome to the show. The idea of this each week is to give you a couple of bits and pieces towards your ballroom and Latin dancing, some fundamentals, some basics that often get f forgotten. I'm going to put it like this. Common sense is not common practice. You're going to hear things from me that you've heard from your coach, you probably heard since day one when you first started your dance journey. But you've got to think about it like this. Are you closing the knowing and doing gap? I can't stress to you how many people tell me, I know that, and I'm like, but are you doing that? And, and of course the answer is no, and we have a laugh. And then it's like, okay, the idea of coaching is not always to teach you something new. Although in dancing, we need to get more knowledge to an extent, we actually have to execute on what we already know and why we're not actually doing it. And there are reasons for that. It's one of the reasons I do a motivational rant or speech or talk on Mondays to get you in the right frame of mind because you've got to push your body. You have to push the limitations within you that physically exist. So in the mind, there are no limits, right? But in our body, we have physical limits and we need to challenge those. We need to push them. You need to sort of, like the, the Play-Doh, you need to break yourself apart and rebuild yourself. So there has to be some internal motivation to do that because why would you go through the pain of change, right? Like why bother with the pain of growth, if you will? And so I remember when I was starting my journey in the dance world and well, this little book here, you see that? The Tattered and Torn Boring Technique. Okay, so I've got the great pleasure of actually interviewing uh, Anthony Hurley who wrote the preface in this book but also was obviously very uh, close with Alex Moore, who wrote this technique. Now, well, when I say wrote the technique, they standardized the technique so that you know, us teachers in the world could have a little, a little Bible to go to, right? a little thing you could go to and go, you know what, this dancing thing, how do I figure it out? What reference can I go to to, uh, to improve my dancing, or not only to improve my dancing, but have something because I can't retain all the information? And as a teacher, when I was an amateur competing, you know, you don't, almost don't have time to learn technique, right? You almost don't have time to, uh, the time needed to develop your dancing should go invested into learning technique, but often that precedence is, uh, you know, taken over by a competition or a medal test. And weeks in, weeks go by, weeks out, and all of a sudden you're like, man, like I haven't really studied much of my dancing, but I've done a lot of choreography. I've done a lot of stamina training, or I've done a lot of preparation on my routines. Unfortunately, that doesn't make you a better dancer necessarily, you see. So you might be physically training your body, but how are you training it? So I'm, I've got these glasses on because I'm a dance nerd, right? Like, I love this book. I'll show you something, right? I got this in 2005. I'm not sure if that you can see up there. My mum wrote a little inscription that says, Dear Vaughan, to help you realize your dreams. Much love, mum. Shout out to you, mum. Love you. You're amazing, right? Because... How many people do we have in our life that truly back us? Because the dance sport world's pretty competitive. It could be pretty nasty. People don't really want you to succeed, to be honest. Uh, I do, but like, you know, I'm an exception. Most people don't. They want you to, if you're competing, to, to bomb out and to not, because then you beat someone else, right? You, or you're, you're, you're surpassing someone else's student. So it takes a very, very special person or a special coach to not play into those games. And we were fortunate enough to have coaches like that in our life who soar above that, right? Um, and so coming back into technique, what's really important for you is you don't have to know every ounce of this book, but it ain't gonna hurt. And if you're gonna become a teacher or a professional, then you must know this book. Like it's something you must study, you reference many, many times. I use this every day. Like I'm going back in the studio, I'm like, what's that thing again? And the more I do that, the more I learn. So as I said before, as an amateur coming through, I didn't have time to do a lot of this stuff, but the minute I started putting my one hour, I did five private lessons a week, uh, and then one of those became dedicated towards mastering this book. So this show's not necessarily about the ins and outs of this book, but I'm gonna recommend to all of you, you buy a copy of it. You know, technique will save you, it'll free you. 
there's a, a thing from Bruce Lee I, tr I really like. He's, it's like technique gives you freedom. It gives you form, which gives you freedom. And you need that. And a lot of people are against technique in ballroom dancing sometimes. Like, I just want to dance, man. I, I just want to dance. Come on, teach me how to dance on this show. Teach me how to make it better. Come on. It's like, listen, if you don't master your feet, nothing's going to happen for you. It's not going to work. So I hope you understand the importance. Technique gives you freedom. So what the really trippy thing is, let's say on a sliding scale, like a linear scale, you start here at zero, no technique, no knowledge. As you go along, the more you get into technique, the more confusing it is in the beginning. And the more it's like, I wish I never did this. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing it to myself? But then after a certain tipping point, it's like that linear curve goes up and like it just blows up to this massive ramp where the technique just clicks and your body starts responding. You get to what I like to call an activated dancer. Now, is that something you'd like to be? Now, this can happen at any age, by the way. It's time that you have to commit. So I need you to make a personal commitment that this year, right, is going to be the best dancing for you in your entire life. If you've been dancing for 20 years, this will be the best year above all other 19. If this is the first year you've danced, watch what happens for you if you commit like this. And so today we're going to talk about foot work and foot positions. All right. Now in this book, you'll see if you've never seen the technique book, it, it, the inside of it, right? It's got like, it's like a little, it's its own little language. You know what I mean? Like it's got something called chart headings there. You got, uh, abbreviations galore, you know, DC, DW, LF, and you're like, what the hell, what WTF, man, what am I in at the moment? And so there's a little language to learn. And I often say to students when they first start this, it's exactly like learning a language. When you first start ballroom dancing, it's like, where are the toilets? How do you say hello? And that's the basics you only know, right? And even then you're like, uh, no public English, right? Like you got no idea what to say, you know? I don't even know if that was right. But the point is, is that you can't converse. Then after a while, you start to get the basics of the world around you. You start to say them in a different language. Very soon, you can do very elementary conversation. How are you? I am well. You can respond. You can ask small questions. And then after a while, what happens? You can engage in conversation, understand the next level. Very soon, to become fluent, you're understanding subtext and nuance and slang, right? And so that's, to me, like professional level. You know, you really understand your dancing when you can just, when in your head, you can look at this book, you can read it and go, that's an interesting step, and it's literally like you see it in your head, and the proceed and follow, you can, which is before and after, you can actually follow through with. But call me old school, but this is the future. You have to understand this. Now, the development of ballroom dancing, the mechanical side of it, the structure, the hold, the way movement has developed, yeah, that has definitely changed. But the core principles, they have not. It's like building a house, no matter how much technology we get. And yeah, we can get robots and AI to build 3D printed houses, and that's actually happening. Um, the house foundations remain the same, you know, like they don't change. It's not like you're going to put a new foundation in or it's like, hey, we're going to try something new. No foundation today. Off we go. You know, lawsuits are coming. It's the same in ballroom dancing. And so the two things we're going to focus on to start with is footwork and foot positions. My question for you is this. Do you know your footwork and your foot positions? And I want you to leave me a little, uh, a little answer below right now. By the way, give a little like, share, or shout out for me um, if you're feeling this, right? I want to know where are you at in your ballroom dancing? I'm going to leave you a second here for you to respond. Do you know what footwork is and feet positions? I want you to give me the definition of them if you do. So, what is it? Footwork, feet positions. All right, with that done, I'll take myself and my little Java. It's been that sort of night with my little one. No excuses, right? So, footwork. What part of your foot is in contact with the flow? The flow is your friend, right? This, this is supposed to be your bestie. Sometimes your partner ain't gonna be your friend. Sometimes you're gonna hate your coach, you know? Uh, but your floor is your friend. <clears throat> so footwork is what part of the foot is in contact with the floor? Is it a heel? Is it a ball? Is it a toe? Now I want you to think about what parts of your feet you actually have. And so <laughs> it's interesting when beginners first come to learn dancing, we're all here once. Well, you may still be there. <laughs> I know sometimes I feel like it, but they come into the studio and it's like, we're gonna walk, let's practice walking. And it's like, 
whoa, what's going on? I forgot how to walk, you know, because you're concentrating so much. But we often don't pay attention to our feet in dancing. We get caught up in the riffraff of choreography, performance, look, uh, things that are going wrong. And so footwork is what part of the foot's in contact with the floor? You want to think about it as a heel. Is it a heel lead going forward? Is it a heel to a toe? Is it a ball of foot that you're using? Is it an outside edge of, of foot? You see, that is actually a foot position too. Not often in ballroom dancing, more in Latin, of course, but we do have it. Inside edge of toe, right? Inside edge of whole foot. We have also whole foot. And so as you think about all those different pieces of your foot, it's like, oh man, I actually have more to my foot than just a flat thing going on the ground, you know? And so when you're moving forward, you actually want to comb through your routine. And I recommend to all of my students, you get a book, you write out on one side the exact and precise names of your routine. And I mean like the nitty gritty, not, not left foot, right foot. I'm talking about if you're doing a, a natural spin turn, you write the word natural spin turn. You don't just write spin turn, you write natural spin turn. So you understand the lingo and you understand the construct of the natural spin turn. So for example, you know that a natural spin turn consists of the first three steps of a natural turn, one, two, three, and then the four, five, six changes. Rather than going back to the side and closing, we decide to add in a pivot, the lady a pivot action, and we spin out. All right, there's your natural spin turn. Now with that done, you've got to think about what are your feet doing? What's your footwork? Well, so for example, we're going right foot forward for the man, heel, toe, 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 heel. Then with the left foot, you're going toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, toe, heel. Now with that being done, you're actually thinking quite specifically about your foot in relation and contact to the floor. It allows you to then concentrate on where your movement's gonna go, which is called alignment. We'll talk about that another day. The point being, you've got your natural spin turn on your book on the left-hand side. Next to it, you should have your timing. Always write your timing down. And next to that, have another column. And you, have, you might have a lot of columns, but I would say have a column for footwork, just to start to understand. And you can write one, two, three, four, five, six, one being for step one, two for being step two, three for step three, and you write heel, toe, 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 heel. There's the first three steps. And so that starts to train yourself to think about the footwork you're actually using. What are you actually using in relation to the floor? Now that's gonna bring up its own issues. Your balance is gonna be affected because your brain's gonna want to avoid losing balance. So when you go on your toes, you may not go on your toes. You may not go as high as you need to. And you may not lower effectively, which is a, you know, for example, toe heel, that's a footwork position, uh, or a footwork um, uh, instruction. So the next thing we're gonna look at is feet positions. Okay, foot positions. This is the way I like to think of it. So if you've got your feet positions, essentially, wherever you are in the entire freaking universe, the spectrum of the galaxy, if you will, your feet are in the center right now wherever you are in the room. So foot position or feet positions, which is one of the first chart headings and a very, very important one, is instructing you where do your feet go in relation to each other? Do they go sideways, side and slightly forward, side and slightly back? Do they go forward, backwards? Are you using the left foot or the right foot? Are you going into promenade, CBMP, outside partner, side leading? So these foot positions are a very important to know because it's essentially the joystick or the, the GPS to where your foot should actually go in terms of movement. Now, the, the definition is one foot in relation to the other. And so if you're standing in the middle, or not the middle, but right in the center, your feet are on a cross. So you go sideways and forward and back, right? There's your cross. Now, that way you'll know forward is literally that direction. So if in the foot positions, we're supposed to go left foot forward, that's left foot forward. If I'm supposed to go right foot back, that's right foot back. Not on an angle, which people do. If you step the wrong direction, no wonder you lose balance, you lose control, you lose timing, right? These are where the problems originate. It's so basic sometimes, right? And of course, there's always gonna be other interferences, but losing balance, losing time, losing control only ever really come as a consequence of a few principles gone wrong not 16 other factors hitting you from the outside, like people throwing apples at you or chairs or something. I don't know. I don't know what sort of studio you're in. <laughs> but anyways, we've got feet positions going sideways, forward, backward, 
we can go side and slightly forward, sometimes diagonal, very rarely, but that, those are the movements we can do. It's also instructing you, and I like to say it like this, where your feet go, your body follows. So if my right foot's going back, my body's gonna follow that, okay? And so that sort of movement is what we're focusing on from a foot position point of view. Now you can see how the two can come together. One sec, just so hopefully I haven't cut out. Okay, so if I go right foot forward, that's my foot position. If I go heel toe, that's my footwork. So for today, your exercise is to go through your feet and to go through your footwork and to think about what you're actually doing downstairs before you worry about your partner, your, your coach, your stamina, and all those other things. Because in the next episode, I'd love to know your questions and thoughts about this. I'd like to bring you the next level, right? Like what, what do you need to do after that? Because essentially we're gonna have to do more than that because if you dance like this, you're gonna be in a world of problems, you know? You're not gonna have enough quality movement. But that's gonna be enough to get you going for this week for sure. You just wanna go back to basics because if we master our basics, we master our dancing. This is Vaughn, I wanna thank you for tuning in. Make sure you visit uh, ballroommastery.com for some free training. You know, I, lo I love training, so I've got heaps of it for you. Uh, you just ne merely need to go across to ballroommastery.tv, check it out. Also, uh, stay tuned for upcoming courses and programs that we have headed your way some t-shirts, we have a lot going on, uh, and I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for being part of the channel, or the page, or however we got to meet and have a dance today. And I hope this helps you, and it serves you. I'm gonna hit the button, exit out of this one. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you in the next episode.